for that, Richard. And we'll be getting more from Richard later in this program. Now, in Sudan, a woman facing death by hanging for converting to Christianity has given birth to a baby girl. This is the first public picture of baby Maya born in prison to 27-year-old Maryam Ibrahim on Tuesday. The newborn is shown sleeping in the arms of her father, Daniel. Ibrahim is allowed to nurse her child for two years before the sentence is carried out. She has appealed. The African Union is launching a campaign to end child marriage. In Zambia, more than 40% of young women are married before the age of 18 and often forced into it by older men. As Tanya Page reports from Chipata in East Zambia, the country's first lady is making efforts to bring about change. Exams are on many students' minds as they walk to school, but others have more grown-up problems to think about. Nedia Chongwe eloped with her boyfriend in February. He wanted to convince my parents we should marry. But it's her books, not a marriage bed, that her parents are insisting on. Their chief tracked her down and ended her plans. Nkosi Matsimawe is part of a group of traditional leaders in Zambia that's trying to end child marriages. He calls the police and somewhat uncomfortable meetings like this. The husbands are often much older than the brides, but not this time. He's at university. She dropped out of school. In Zambia, all the traditional leaders have agreed that uh, all the negative customs and tradition must be uh, done away with. So basically at the moment we are not going against any tradition because the tradition that has been embraced now is to see to it that we have an educated community in Zambia. Ruth Chongwe's early marriage was also ended by the chief who often helps pay for the girls' school fees. I was missing for four days with my husband. My family was looking for me. When they found me, I was a bit scared of what my dad would do, so I resisted at first. Madimawe has spoken at the United Nations about child marriage, spreading his message from the village to New York. The teenagers have all been given a second chance, but the chief doesn't have the resources to send them all back to school, nor address what he says is the main cause of these sorts of marriages, and that's poverty. Marriage offered Fatima Nyoni a chance to be the head of a household. But the chief intervened and now she's back with her mother. There was no point at which we considered the issue of marriage because she was way too young. We want her back in school. But they can't afford the $3 administrative fee to have her readmitted to school. So even with progressive leadership, poverty is holding her back. Tanya Page, Al Jazeera, Chipata, Eastern Zambia. Well, every year about 14 million teenage girls are married and many of them are forced into weddings against their will. The practice is most common in sub-Saharan Africa. Niger has the highest child marriage rate in the world. 75% of girls get married before the age of 18. And in neighboring Chad, it's 68%. Now, those figures come from the UN's Agency for Children, UNICEF. And the same number of underage marriages take place in the Central African Republic. Well, for more on this, let's speak to Nabila Abdul Malik from the African Women's Development and Communication Network, known as FEMNET. And she joins us live now from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Uh, good to have you on. Um, the report we, we just saw focuses on uh, the, the girls trying to get married themselves. But in most cases, would it not be society, perhaps the girls' parents, and, and as we saw from those statistics, even cultural norms for uh, young girls to be married off? Yes, definitely. We know that in the majority of cases, um, the girls are married off forcefully uh, without their consent. Um, so that's, that's what we're fighting. We're fighting for, um, to ensure that every girl is not denied the right to make a decision over her body and her life, uh, which is highly impacted when she's married off um, at a very young age. Now, how difficult is this going to be, given that most of the countries where you see the, those huge number of child marriages are, are paternalistic, mostly male-dominated, who, who make the rules and regulations there? It's a very difficult battle, but it is possible, um, and I think the AU campaign uh, sets a good precedent because we do need political will um, at the highest levels, and it's good to know that um, Archbishop, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, for example, Grasha Michelle, have joined the campaign to end child marriage, but I think we also need commitment at all levels. Um, so when teachers come together and parents, uh, community leaders, 
but also the politicians. Uh, we need to strengthen our laws. We need to make sure that even where there are laws that set the minimum age of marriage at 18, for example, that there are no loopholes, which we know are taken advantage of. Uh, for example, there's customary law that says, well, a child is able to get married as long as she has consent from her parents, uh, which is something, of course, that we, we hope does not happen. In addition, uh, we do see in a number of cases where, uh, in cases of sexual violence, for example, that the perpetrator is um, set free as long as he marries his victim. So that as well is very problematic and needs to be fought. Our correspondent brought up a point in that report saying that the, the, the main issue is not being addressed, which is poverty and the fact that many don't have the resources to, to fight against child marriage. Uh, how, how is that going to be combated? I think poverty is both a cause and a consequence of child marriage. Um, and I think one of the things that governments need to do is invest in education um, and invest in education in terms of the quality of education, making sure that it's safe um, and accessible. We know that one, um, a girl with secondary education is six times less likely to marry as a child uh, than a girl with no education. So there are uh, efforts that are being made and efforts that do need to be made to fight it. And we un need to understand that child marriage also perpetuates poverty um, and, it, and it contributes uh, to the decline in, in development. And it, for our country, Africa is celebrating 50 plus years of independence and we're saying this is a Pan-African renaissance. And as we look forward to the next 50 years of our development, it's very critical that we make sure that we end child marriage now because of the multiple consequences that it has on society. Mm -hmm. Good to talk to you, uh, Nabila Abdul Malik, on a very worthy topic. Thank you. Thank you for having me.